G'day guys, today we're looking at a very special Kobe Small Army World War II tank and that's Tiger 131. It's set number 2477, it has about 500 pieces and two minifigures. So this tank is special for a number of reasons. It's special to me because the Tiger 1 and Tiger 2 are two of my favourite World War II tanks. In addition, this set is also special because it's based on the Tiger 131 in the Bovington Tank Museum in England. Now that a tank is a running tank, it's been restored to working order. You can actually go to an event called Tank Fest, held by the Bovington Tank Museum, and see this Tiger in operation, which I think would be a fantastic thing to see for any World War II enthusiast, and especially any tank fan. I certainly would like to get there one day myself. The other thing that's special about this tank is that a portion of the sale of the tank goes to the museum to help them maintain the running costs and the maintenance of the actual Tiger 131. Kobe's already done a number of Tigers, which I already thought were excellent, so I had high hopes for this tank. And long story short, this tank hasn't disappointed. It has a lot of positive aspects, but it does also have some negatives which we'll cover as well. Kobe basically is 90% like Lego. It's excellent quality ABS plastic. The molding is very good. It's not as good as Lego, the molding, but it's very, very close. Um, some people don't prefer the minifigures over Lego. Um, I quite like them, but anyway. The actual Tiger 131 box is probably one of the larger boxes in the small army World War II range. Now right off the bat you can see that this is a peculiar one, it's got the Tank Museum logo on the front here. As always with these Kobe boxes, uh, there's quite a little bit of information on the back of the box. It shows off all the play features and the functionality of the tank. It also gives quite a few statistics on the tank and a little bit of uh, history here. In the box you get two numbered bags of pieces and you get a few large plates which make up quite a big portion of the main structure of the tank. And of course you also get an instruction manual, which as typical from Kobe, it's a full color manual, it's excellent quality. Really to highlight the quality, um, one thing I love about Kobe manuals is they're very easy to understand. They always call out the specific pieces you need and the instructions from step to step are very easy to follow. When I was building this tank, one thing that really struck me is how solid and compact the actual model is. And the completed model is actually quite heavy. It feels very heavy and solid in the hand. So if I put on the scales, you can see it weighs 611 grams, which is, that's quite a lot of plastic and bricks that you're getting uh, in this kit. Now highlighting some of the features you get on the model, just like other large Kobe tanks, it comes with the solid plastic tracks. They're all interlocking and they move freely. I mean, I've said this before, it's probably the best track system I've ever seen in bricks. They're extremely solid, they're reliable, and they just work perfectly. You also get three of these hatch pieces. And one thing I like about the current crop of Kobe models, they really have evolved over the years. We now have specifically molded um, drive sprockets and idler wheels. Um, the road wheels are also specifically modeled. The hatch pieces are also modeled after German tanks. Another bonus with um, Kobe kits is basically all of the decals you see on here, they're all printed pieces. There are no stickers to apply to this model at all. As I said before, the actual idler piece is a new piece that they've made for these tanks. Some other things I really like as well is all the tanks now include the rubber aerial, which is actually really nice because previously they had a quite a long solid plastic aerial and those were quite easy to break. So just like in other tanks, the turret rotates freely. There's elevation in the gun, quite a lot of elevation actually. One thing unfortunate with this tank is the gun can't really aim downwards. That's as far down as the gun will go. They've also included with this model um, a shovel piece, a nice printed be the driver's visor. We have our gun here and on top of the turret we have another hatch and another hatch here for the gunner. Now Kobakowski mentioned this in his video and I will link his video down in the description but one thing I would have liked to have seen is a better version of this hatch here. It's been the same hatch for the past couple of iterations of the tank uh, and it would have been nice to have a specifically molded piece here. They've created a new mantlet mold, which looks fantastic. It's this level of detail that we're starting to see from Kobe. Now, one of the best aspects of this model is actually the construction of the rear exhaust system for the tank itself. Now, in real life, this tank was based in North Africa, um, where I believe there was a lot of sand and dust issues and ventilation getting into the engine. So they had this system of filtration for air either coming in or going out of the tank. And they've modeled this on the, on the tank here excellently. It's quite a fun build actually building this whole system. So on the rear of the tank, we have the two exhaust covers. Now what's interesting is they've molded this, um, I believe this would be damage or, or dirt or debris, 
Now, I'm not 100% certain, but this damage might be visible on the actual tank itself in the Bovington Tank Museum. That might be why they've actually uh, put these decals on in this way, to actually match the real tank. Now, you've probably already seen this, but on the Kobe tank, they've put this little decal here. Now, that decal there is to indicate where the actual shell from the British tank hit this tank and wedged in the turret ring. And it's nice that they've included that detail there. I mean, for play, uh, for kids, it really adds to the overall authenticity of this tank and the story itself. Now, a couple of other things that are new for the Tiger when compared to the old Tigers, they've now molded the side skirting here in the correct angle to the tank itself. And they've done that, I'll just pull this off. They've done that with a clever use of clips on either end of this actual armor. So this half of the armor is actually supposed to represent part of the tank, and this is supposed to represent the side skirting. And when you attach it, it does look very authentic. The angle looks great. Um, I've only got really two downsides to this. And the first is that front on, uh, there is an actual gap in the tank itself. And the actual armor here sits up slightly higher at the front. And you can see that the armor doesn't follow through all the way to the rear of the tank. So there's a little bit of the tank showing there, which is a bit too narrow. But overall, the actual effect, I think, looks fantastic. The Tiger comes with two minifigures, and they're both Bovington Tank Museum engineers and maintenance workers. This is the first minifigure. Now the torso looks fairly standard, it's like an overall outfit. But one thing I really like is on the rear they have this Tank Museum logo insignia on his coat, which I think actually is as a nice little touch, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, and he, this guy comes with a, a glass accessory, and this is the second minifigure. Now I'm not sure if this minifigure has grey hair, and I'm not sure if these two characters are actually modelled off real life engineers. It'd be quite interesting to find out if they are. But in any case, they're both the same torso, they've both got the printing on the back. Both minifigures look pretty good. The tank also comes with this little crate or chest, and inside are some very highly detailed tools for working on the tank. One of my disappointments with the tank was actually the choice of minifigures. I think it makes sense that they included the tank museum crew, but because this is a special edition tank, and it does cost slightly more than other tanks in the series, I thought it would have been a nice inclusion to include one or two Africa Core crew so that children and adults could use this tank and play with the tank and learn about the tank both in its operational role in the North Africa front um, and also in its current day role uh, as a restored piece in the tank museum. I have a couple of Africa Core minifigures here which I think would have gone really nicely with this tank so that you could set it up in either format. These are the three Tiger tanks Kobe has so far released. This was the very first one, released I believe about two years ago. It was the first Tiger they produced. And I must admit, when I first bought this tank, I really liked it. It was sort of the only Tiger tank you could buy in a proper kit for, for a reasonable amount of money. Um, that's a brick set. Uh, it had, I thought it looked excellent. This particular tank is also modeled after an early war Tiger with um, the exhaust system. And this Tiger had a lot of uh, unique aspects I hadn't seen on a tank before. It had those excellent track system. It had a, an excellent turret at the time, I thought, and, and you could basically look at this and say, you know, that's definitely a Tiger. But this tank had a lot of room for improvement. Um, the road wheels and the drive and idler wheel didn't exactly look right. Um, the gun itself, whilst it looked reasonable, um, I thought it could have been improved. And about a year later, Kobe did improve it, and they released this model. And this one here, I thought, was pretty close to perfection. They'd changed a lot um, since the first Tiger. They had created a new um, gun barrel system, which looks very much like an 88mm gun. Um, they'd started implementing these new um, hatch pieces. They'd also started moulding specific road wheels and, and drive sprockets, which look exactly like the real German tanks. And they changed the design of the front and quite a few other pieces. And overall, this looks exactly like a Tiger almost from every angle. So when I heard they were releasing a new Tiger 1 through 1, I didn't really know how much more they could improve. But I guess you can sort of see off the bat, they have improved a couple of key things. You now have the hatch pieces here for the driver and the gunner. Or the loader, I guess this person will be here. Um, they've also now got that excellent um, rear idler wheel, which does look much more like a German vehicle than this um, sort of standardized wheel that Kobe uses. But overall, the biggest new difference is clearly this side skirting, which does look much better in this version than it does as these hinged pieces. And I think Kobe has done an excellent job here. Despite my complaint about this um, armor here, I think the side skirting on this new Tiger does look significantly better than this Tiger. 
But I mean, overall, I really like all of the Tigers. Um, I'm glad that I've got all of them in my collection, and I'm really excited to see where Kobe take the tank design in the future, because they seem to be constantly improving their products. And in a year or two's time, I'll probably be looking at another Tiger one saying, you know, they've now improved this XYZ and it's even better. So there you go. That's my thoughts on Tiger 131. I think Kobe has done an excellent job representing this tank in this small brick version. I think the, the quality of the decals, of the historical features that they've included with this tank are excellent. I think the play features for children or for model displaying purposes, I think they're excellent as well. I think this would be an excellent souvenir to bring home from the tank museum itself. You can see the real Tiger 131 on display or out being driven and you can pick one up to take home or to your office for yourself. It really is an excellent display piece. I'm very happy with Kobe's efforts and I really can't wait to see how they improve from here. In any case guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about the tank, or about anything else Kobe, or any other Kobe Small Army World War II tanks, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.